What up, what up? Winbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how I can use my brand new iPad Pro 12.9 inch inside of Unreal Engine 5. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, before we get started, I just want to give the disclaimer. You can use any iOS device that has any type of gyrometer inside of it. As long as you can move your device around, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone, you should be good to go here. And so I'm going to get started inside the Unreal Engine project browser. I'm going to use the film video on live events. And the reason I'm going to use this is because it's already set up for virtual production. So we don't have to turn on any of the plugins or anything of that nature. As soon as we start up a brand new project, everything should be good to go. And if you wanted to start this in something else, say maybe like in a game template, make sure you get to my previous tutorial where I show you all the different plugins and everything that you need to set up. So I already have everything set up here, but basically I did a blank scene and then I just saved my project somewhere. So I'm going to hit cancel here. And this is the project that I currently have set up. So if I click on my scene and I hold down control, hit spacebar, that's going to bring up my content browser in which I'm using the stylized forest here. And the stylized forest is actually free for this month. I'm currently doing this in June 2021. And so if you wanted to follow along, make sure you go to the marketplace, download the stylized forest. It's absolutely free for the entire month. And so this is the one that I'm going to be using for the demonstration purposes here. So I'm going to go back to Unreal Engine 5, come down to maps, and I'm going to click on demonstration here. And this is my scene here. So we have something already built out here. So the next step from here, we actually want to go into our iPhone or our iPad. You want to go into the Apple Marketplace and you want to download the appropriate app. And if you want a direct link to it, I'll share the link down below. But this is what you're looking for here is the Unreal Remote 2. So just make sure you go to the Apple Store and you download it. As you can see here from the screenshots, you can use it with both the iPad and the iPhone. So once you have the app and everything set up, you're going to have to make sure you connect your iPad or your iPhone to your computer over your Wi-Fi. And so to get set up, we actually want to come over to edit. Then we want to come down to project settings. Then inside the search bar here, we just want to type unicast. And you'll see right here under plugins UDP mess, you'll see we have this little option here under transport. It says unicast endpoint. And this is exactly where you're going to want to put your IP address. And if you're not sure where to find your IP address, I'm currently using Windows 10. I'm not sure where to do it on Apple, but if I hit the Windows key on my keyboard, then down here in the search bar, if I type in CMD, that brings up the command prompt. And then right here, all you have to do is type config. And then what you're going to be looking for is called the IP version 4. And that will give your IP address. I already know what mine is. Basically, mine is 10. So I'm going to put a 1 there. And then at the very end, mine is 12. And then right here with the semicolon, you want to make sure that you just leave zero in here. And if I pull up the documentation, this shows you exactly everything that you'll need. So I'll leave this down below for you as well. And it's saying if you're having any type of connection issues, you could do semicolon 6666 at the end. And that might help you deal with your problems there. But for me, semicolon zero seems to work out and everything. So I'm going to minimize this. And again, I'll leave that link in case you guys want to go over it yourselves. And that should be it for there. So next, I'm going to hit X on here. And then I'm going to look for render on my left hand side. It should be under engine. So here we have engine and then I have rendering right here. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down until I find. Let me see. It's called default settings. So right here, there's this little arrow that we want to show some of the advanced settings. So you'll click on this and under frame buffer pixel format, it's going to start off as 10 bit, but for some reason we want to have it at 8 bit. That's what it says inside the documentation. And then it's going to ask you to restart it. So all we have to do is click restart here. And then I'm just going to save selected and we have everything restarted here in which I'm going to hit control space and I'm going to bring up my demonstration map again. And here we go. So the next step from here is we want to add a virtual camera. So under demonstration, under create, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to come down to virtual production and we actually want to use the second one. This is virtual camera to actor. So I'm just going to click and drag it into my scene. And there we go. So I'm going to drag it up a little bit. And there we go. So I'm just going to place it somewhere around there. And then if I come over here to my raw outliner, I'm actually going to bring this up so I can see my details panel. And if I scroll down to my details panel right here under virtual camera to actor, if I scroll down, we have this little blue button here that's called VCAM. We want to select this. So there's a few things that we want to enable here. And so if I scroll down and I come down here to output providers, I'm going to click on this and then index zero. I'm going to click on this 
then output click this down and then i want to click activate so that's the only thing that i want to click on there and then on my ipad i actually want to make sure that i pull the app up for this next step so i'm just going to open up my ipad here then i'm going to open up the unremote app that we downloaded from the apple marketplace and as you can see right here it's going to ask you to bring up your ip address in which you're just going to type in the same ip address we typed in earlier and then i'm going to click connect on here and then it's just going to say connecting and it's going to have your ip address there so i'm going to put this back down and then i'm going to come over here to window come over here to virtual production and click on live link now under here under source if i click on this and then go to message bus source we should see this pop up it's going to say remote session and whatever your ios device is named that's what it's going to pop up here if everything's connected appropriately so i'm going to click on this and there we go so it says jonathan's ipad proactive we have everything greenlit down here and that should be it so i'm just going to minimize this here and then back over here under vcam where it says live link subject i'm actually going to click in here then i'm going to click on camera transform and if i bring back up that previous window the live link one you can see that it correlates with the subject names here so as long as you have this activated here you should be able to select it under the live link here and i think that should be it so everything that we need to connect it to our ipad or our iphone should be selected so i'm going to actually pull up my ipad now make sure i have it positioned exactly how i want it to be and then under virtual camera the last thing we need to select is this enable button and there we go so now you can see i have my ipad working inside of unreal engine 5. so the cool thing is whenever i tap on the screen it's going to correlate on top of my computer here so you can see that i'm going to adjust my lens here something like that so everything that's happening on my ipad right now is happening in real time on the screen so i'm going to click the lens back up and yeah with the gyrometer you can basically move you get a little bit of room scale in here so if i move backwards a little bit so i need a little bit more space but you see we've got a little bit of room scale in there and if you want to move a longer distance there's this little button down here next to the camera button to the lower left if i click on that that brings up our controls on our display here so if i wanted to move forward you just push that then if i wanted to move around with if I want it to look left or right, I'm going to click on the one that's on the right there. And there we go. So I know in my previous videos, some people are actually asking me, they were saying that like they couldn't get it to connect right with the drawmeter. All you have to do is basically go through those steps again. Like when I was previously trying to set this up, it didn't work the first time. And so once I did it the second time, it seemed to work there. And then another tip that I also have is on your Wi-Fi router, if you set it to the highest channel, like I'm using the Netgear Nighthawk. And so once I log into my actual Wi-Fi router, it allows you to select the channels. And so the one thing that I've noticed, if you select a higher channel, that might help with your connection as well. Because if you have too many devices connected to a certain channel, you're gonna get all that Wi-Fi interference. And so as long as you have it on a channel that it should be you know, safe from other devices out there, that should help you get the one-to-one -one movement on your iOS device. And if you want to take your shots to the next level, get a little bit more steady shots in there. I have this shorter mount that I got from Amazon. Then I actually found a clip that's large enough to hold a 12.9 iPad Pro. And so I'll leave those links down in the description as well. But I could turn with the shorter mount, look all around, and it's going to give me a little bit smoother movements on here. And as soon as I'm ready to record a scene, we have this little lock button down here in the lower left-hand corner. If I click on that, you can see now it's red. We have the camera, it's inside like this little red circle. So if I click on this, it actually is gonna record a take now. So all the movements that I do here, it's gonna record it inside the sequencer. And whenever you're done, all you do is click that camera button again. And it should say take recorded. And then let me show you exactly where we go to find that. 
Okay, so I just deactivated my iPad and everything. I'm gonna come over here to perspective, look through my camera, come down here to cinematic viewport, and then let me show you where we could go to find our camera information. So I'll hold down control, hit spacebar. That's gonna bring up our content browser. And if you see here under content, we now have a folder called cinematics, and then we have takes right here. So I'm gonna double click on takes. We have today's date. And then I'm gonna to go to one more folder here. This is sub scenes, double click on this. And then I'm gonna double click on the sequencer here. And now you can see we have a virtual camera down here. We have all of our keyframes and everything. So if I click on this camera here, then I click play. This is all the movements recorded inside this camera information here. So this is exactly what I was doing when I had the iPad up on my short amount. You can see we have all the turns and everything and we're getting a lot of shake in there because I was pretty shaky when I was on the shoulder mount, but that's exactly how we record our camera information from the iPad device. And if you ever have any questions, I'll leave this link to the documentation down below. All you basically have to do is go through here. If you didn't set it up the same way that I had it set up, this shows you all the different plugins that you need to enable. So say that you didn't use the template that I use for virtual production. These are the three things that you're gonna make sure that you enable whenever you get this all set up. And then it basically runs through all the stuff that I just showed you about your IP and how to get everything connected up with the iOS device. So again, if you're having any type of issues, make sure you go through this documentation because maybe there's a setting up on your device that you're missing there. So hopefully that helps you guys out. I know I had a question before someone was having trouble hooking up their iPad to Unreal Engine 5. So hopefully the step-by-step -step will help you get through it. And so if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're digging the video, leave me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. What up, what up? Wimbush here.